when you provision a data store in ONTAP storage for your VMware ESXi clients, it's recommended that you use the NetApp VSC plugin to do that. That's the Virtual Storage Console. VSC is a plugin that plugs into vCenter and that allows you to configure everything from the vSphere client. So you configure the data store there and the configuration will be pushed over to the ONTAP site. It ensures that it complies with the best practice settings. So it's recommended to use VSC when you're configuring your data stores, but it's not actually a requirement to use it. You can manually do the configuration yourself on the vSphere side and also on the ONTAP side. So that's what I'm going to show you here with a lab demo. I'll show you how to manually configure a traditional NFS data store. Let's have a look at the lab topology first so you can see what I'm going to be doing here. So up at the top, you can see that I've got a couple of ESXi hosts. That's ESXi1 and ESXi2. They've both got the same networking set up on there. They have got a couple of uplinks connected to the management network. That's VMNIC0 and VMNIC1. That's on a virtual standard switch. They've got another couple of uplinks. That's VMNIC4 and 5, which are connected to the virtual machine network using a virtual distributed switch. And I've got a separate dedicated VDS virtual distributed switch for storage, which has got a couple of uplinks, which are using VMNICs 2 and 3. I already set up that virtual distributed switch in the last lecture. Also in the last lecture, I configured my VM kernel ports on the ESXi hosts, which are going to be used for NFS. And those VM kernel ports are using IP address 172.23.11.51 on host 1 and 172.23.11.52 on host 2. The IP subnet 172.23.11.0/24 is dedicated for our NFS traffic. On the ONTAP system, I've configured the networking already over there too. I've already got a NAS SVM set up and it's got a couple of lifts which are using IP addresses 172.23.11.21 and 172.23.11.22. There is a couple of links there onto the storage network. I've got an IP address, one on each one. So you can see that the destination addresses that the ESXi hosts are going to be sending their NFS traffic to are in the 172.23.11 network. So because of that, it's going to use the VM kernel ports, which are also in 172.23.11 to send the traffic. ESXi hosts will always use a source address, which is in the same subnet as the destination address with one is available. So when I configured those VM kernel ports, I configured them for redundancy and load balancing so that we're going to use both of the uplinks going to the storage network. So my networking is already done. What I need to do in this video is on the ONTAP system, I need to configure a volume which is going to be set up as the NFS data store and then give the ESXi clients access to that. So let's have a look first at what I've already configured. So looking at the ONTAP system here, if I go to storage and then SVMs, you can see that I've already got a NAS SVM configured there. And then if I go to network and the network interfaces, you'll see that there are my two lifts for NFS. So I've got one with 172.23.11.21 and the other is 172.23.11.22. So my SVM has already been configured and the networking is already done too. I've got my lifts already set up. If we have a look over in the vSphere client and then go to the networking tab here and then look at the storage distributed switch and look at the VM kernel ports in my NFS port group, I can see that I've got those two IP addresses, 172.23.11.51 is already set up on ESXi1 and dot .52 is already set up on ESXi2. Again, to see how to configure that, have a look at the previous lecture. 
Okay, so let's go on ahead and get the storage set up on the NetApp ONTAP system first. So I'll go into System Manager there. And the first thing that I would need to do is because we're using NFS, we're going to have an export policy there, which is going to control which clients are going to be allowed to access the volume. So I'll set up the volume in a minute, but I'm going to configure the export policy first. So I'll go back to storage and SVMs and then select my NAS SVM and click on the SVM settings. And then in here, I'll click on export policies. And you can see this is a brand new SVM, so I haven't got anything set up in here yet. So by default, the default policy has got no rules in it, which means that no clients will get access to any of the volumes in this SVM until I add some rules to give them access. Now, I could configure a dedicated export policy for my ESXi clients, but let's say that this SVM is going to be used just for access from the ESXi clients. So I'm just going to edit the default export policy here, and then that's going to apply to all volumes that I create in this SVM. So with the default policy selected, I'm going to click on add to add a rule. And I could get more specific if I wanted to. I could add all of my ESXi hosts individually, but because they're all using an IP address in the 172.23.11.0 slash 24 network, I'm just going to add that entire subnet in here. And then the access protocols, I'm going to allow them to use NFS to access it. And when the ASXi clients access it, they're going to be using the Unix style authentication. So I can uncheck all of the other types here and I need to allow them both read only and read write to be able to read and write to the data store. I also need to allow super user access as well. So I do that and then click on OK. And you'll now see that I've got the client is added here, the read only and the read write rule for Unix authentication, any clients coming from that subnet will be given access to all volumes by default. But I've got one little problem here in that super user access is set to any. When I configured that in the system manager GUI, it did not allow me to specify the authentication type in here. So I can only do that at the command line. So just for best practice, I'm going to actually edit this at the command line where I'm going to set the super user access also to Unix. So I've already got a command prompt open and over here in my other window, I've got the command ready. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in and then let's go through the command. So I'm saying vServer export policy, rule modify. So I'm going to change that rule. The vServer is my NAS vServer. The policy name is default. It was the first rule. The protocol is NFS. The client match is all clients in the 172.23.11.0 slash 24 network. Read-only rule is sys. That's the same as Unix when we configure it in the command line. The read-write rule is sys, and super user is also sys. And I can hit enter. And now if I go back into the GUI again and refresh this, I can see that the super user access before it was any, now it has changed to Unix. So that's good. So now I've got my export policy set up so that any volumes that I create in this SVM now, my ESXi VMware clients will be allowed access to those volumes. So I've got that set up. So next up, I will actually go and create a volume that is going to be used for the NFS data store. So again, in my NAS SVM, I've gone to storage and then the volumes page and I will click on create. I'm going to create a flex vol. And in here, I'm going to give it the name of NAS vol one. And then I need to select the aggregate that this volume is going to be in. I've only got just the one big aggregate that I've set up already here. I will select that and click on OK. I'll make it a small size of just three gigabytes for this lab demonstration and the rest of the settings there look OK and click on create. That will create the volume for me. So that is done. Now I'm going to edit that volume and I'm going to configure the permissions just to open up the permissions so that my clients get access there and then save and close that. 
Okay, so that is my volume created on the ONTAP storage system. I've configured the security where my ASXI clients will be able to access it now. So now what I need to do is jump onto the VMware side and give my ASXi hosts access to this volume to use it as an NFS traditional data store. So I will go to the vSphere client and then click on the storage tab here and then select my folder, click on actions and then come down to storage and new data store. And then the type of data store is NFS. So I select that and click on next. I want to use NFS version three here. I'll click on next. And then the data store name, I'll give it the same name as the volume. So looking back in ONTAP, I called it NASVOL1. So just to keep things nice and logical, I'm gonna name it NASVOL1 over here in the vSphere client as well. And then the folder name, that is the junction path in ONTAP. So let's check what that was. So I'll go back to ONTAP and because I used System Manager, when I created the volume, it was automatically mounted into the namespace here. So let's see what it was mounted as. It's gonna be the same as the volume name. So under Storage, I go to Junction Paths. And let me just expand this out a bit. And you can see that the path is slash NAS vol one because it's underneath the root volume. So I need to use that same path here in vSphere. So the folder name is the path to the storage. So that was slash NAS vol one. And then the server is the FQDN or the IP address that you're gonna be connecting in on. Normally I would use an FQDN here and then that would allow me to load balanced traffic over both IP addresses that I've got on the SVM. But for simplicity here, I'm just gonna use the IP address of the first lift, which is 172.23.11.21. Okay, so that all looks good. And then I can click on next. I want the data store to be available to both hosts. So I'll check both of them and click on next. Then I can see the summary here, it all looks good and click on finish. I can have a look in my recent tasks here and I will see it creating the data store. And if I expand out my folder here, I can see there it is already. So it's already connected in. I didn't get any error messages. So that all looks good. Let's just confirm that by creating a virtual machine in the data store. So I'll go to hosts and clusters and then I'm going to right click on my first host and I'm going to deploy an OVF template. I've already downloaded an OVF template that I can use for this from the internet. You'll see what that is in a second. So I click on deploy OVF template. I've downloaded the template file to my local hard drive. So I'm going to select that it's in the local file and then click on choose files. And then I need to browse to where I've got this saved. So let me just go ahead and do that. And this is the folder I've got it in. So the name of the OVA template is YVM. This is good in lab environments because it's a really small Linux machine. It doesn't take up hardly any resources. So I'll select that, click on next. I'll give it the name of YVM1 for my first virtual machine. I want it in my Flatbox Lab folder. Click on next. I'm going to put it on my first host, which is dot 31. Click on next. That's its management IP address. And then this is going to take a few seconds to validate. Now, while it's doing this in the lab environment, you need to have your DNS server online, which is the WinA server in our lab. And there's also a service that you need to make sure is running on the vSphere server. So to, to check that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another tab here and I'll go to vcsa.flatboxa.lab. I'm going to launch the vSphere client again in another tab. And when this opens, I'll go under the menu. I'm going to go to administration. And then I go to system configuration. And then when this page loads, 
I will be able to select my vSphere server and click log in there. And then I've already got a tab open with this. It's going to open up this page here, go to services, and you want to make sure that the content library service has been started. Okay, so when you're in the lab and you're deploying OVF templates, for that to work, you need to make sure that the content library service is started and also make sure that your WinA virtual machine, that's your DNS server, is started as well. Because when it deploys the, the template, it does a reverse DNS check to check that everything is okay and online. Okay, so that is running and I know that my WinA server is already running as well. So if I go back to my deploy OVF wizard here, that's why when it did the check there, everything got okay. If you get an error message at that point, it's gonna be for one of those two reasons. Okay, so I've got my summary page here. I can click on next. And then I select the data store that I want this virtual machine to be deployed in. I can also select the format as well. I want this to be thin provisioned, so it's gonna take up less space. I don't have any VM storage policies configured yet. You'll see how to do that later in this section. And the data store that I'm gonna put it in, it gives me the choice of either the local data store, which is the local hard drive on that ESXi host, or on my external NAS Vol 1 data store. So I'm gonna choose that. I can see that compatibility all looks good. I click on next. Then the correct port group is virtual machines. I want it to be in there, that's fine. I click on next. I'll see my summary page and I'll click on finish. This will take a little bit of time. You can see it's importing the package and then it is going to deploy it. So this is going to take maybe 10, 20 seconds, something like that. So I will pause the video here and I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, I can see in my recent tasks that it has successfully deployed the OVF template. I'll expand out my first ESXi host and I can see that as well, it's already running the VCSA virtual machine and I can see that there is the virtual machine I just deployed. It's been deployed on the first host. If I click that and then go to data stores, I can see that it has been deployed on NAS Vol 1. I can also go to the data stores, the storage tab here and click on NAS Vol 1. In here, if I click on the hosts tab, I can see that that data store is available to both of my hosts. And if I click on the files tab, I should see my YVM1 virtual machine in here. And if I click on that, I will see the virtual machine files, they are in my NFS data store. I could also have a look in ONTAP and have a look in the volume and I'll see that some space is taken up in there. It's gonna be a really small amount because it's a really small virtual machine and we thin provisioned it. Okay, so that was everything. That was how to configure an NFS data store. I'll show you how to configure an iSCSI data store in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. Before you go, I'm excited to let you know about my new ONTAP9 Storage Complete course. It's available this week for special discount launch pricing, but the cart closes this Friday, the 18th October. I'll put a link at the top of the description below where you can find out all the details.